Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for a very special presentation of Dharma Advocates Advocacy Training Program. Uh, today, we're going to talk to you about Diwali from classroom to city hall and how you can get a Diwali resolution uh, passed in your uh, local government, as well as how you can learn and, and share HAF's resources. My name is Tanya Kushakchin. I'm HAF's Director of Government Relations and Policy. And joining us today uh, is Shireen Bala, Dr. Shireen Bala, who is HAF's Director of Education, Diversity and Inclusion. Yeah, we're really looking forward to sharing this information with you. We're gonna tell you a little bit about what HAF is and what it is we do here. We're gonna share our Diwali toolkit and the educational information that helps make you a classroom advocate. And then we're also gonna go through the steps on getting your city council to pass a Diwali resolution. Tanyal, maybe you can start by telling us a little bit about what HAF is. Thank you, Shireen. Uh, this is really important, uh, especially for those of you who are not familiar with HAF, or maybe this is your first time on our Dharma Advocates training, uh, but I just want to go through some really simple basic information. First and foremost, the Hindu American Foundation is a 501c3 tax-exempt nonprofit organization. We are also a professional advocacy organization with professional staff, and we are the only Hindu American advocacy organization on Capitol Hill. We represent the interests of all Hindu Americans with the federal government, but as well uh, with state and local elected officials. We are not a political action committee, which means that we cannot support or endorse a candidate for office, and we, we can't donate to candidates. Um, that's, what, uh, that's what political action committees do. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization. So I just wanna be really clear on that as far as what HAF is allowed to do, what we can and can't do. And we are really uh, blessed today because we have uh, Dr. Bala with us uh, and our two main focuses areas are advocacy and education. And so today we kind of get to marry those two in one presentation, which is really great because advocacy you can do anywhere and everywhere and education you kind of can too because you're not only educating elected officials, but you're educating kids, you're educating uh, administrators and, and, and other teachers who are also responsible for that. So uh, I just wanted to, to share that with you and I'll turn it back over to Dr. Ball so she can begin uh, her segment of the presentation today. Yeah, thank you so much. So as you probably know, Diwali is our festival of lights and it's a Hindu holiday widely celebrated in India and across the diaspora. There are many different ways to celebrate and festivities often include lighting lights or candles, firecrackers or diyas, which are little small clay light lamps, such as in the picture to symbolize the victory of good over evil, inner light over spiritual darkness and knowledge over ignorance. Diwali is a time for gathering with loved ones, celebrating life, and committing to making the right decisions. And there are five days to Diwali's festivities, but many end up celebrating on the third day. And this is the day often referred to as Diwali. This year, we're really proud to introduce our Diwali toolkit. This is a packet filled with information and activities to help explain what Diwali is and how to best celebrate. It is an informative resource which has a fact sheet that basically breaks down the who, what, when, where, and how of Diwali and explains the popular narratives of why we celebrate. We also have interactive lessons in this toolkit to help expand your learning. We have a Diwali Dia Roundup lesson which focuses on Common Core math standards. We have a Draw Your Own Rangoli activity which brings out your creative vision. We have a cycles of the moon and signs of the volley. So as the volley is approaching, these two activities allow you to replicate what it is you're seeing in the celebrations, as well as the cycles of the moon patterns as we're approaching the volley and keep track of when it's coming. We also have engaging activities such as a word search and what we like to call a sudia, which is a Sudoku puzzle featuring dias in the boxes. The goal of our resource, of this resource, and pretty much all of our resources, is that they're classroom implementation accessible. And this means that they are a turn and take 
guide. So a teacher could essentially print this out, turn around and use it in this, their classroom the next day, as well as if you're a parent at home, you can download, print it out and do it with your kids. There are objectives and there are standards. <clears throat> Our objectives help define what the learning outcomes are for your students. They focus the teacher on what exactly needs to be taught in the lesson and they feature formal and informal assessments. Most of the lessons adhere to the Common Core State Standards and are featured towards kindergarten through fifth grade. We have activities and content represented in areas such as English language arts, math, as well as science. There are many different ways in order to bring a classroom toolkit such as the Diwali toolkit to your child's class. And here I'm going to outline some steps on how you can do that. The first is I would suggest you familiarize yourself with the content. This is so that you can educate others on what the volley is, as well as help serve as a guide for the teacher. I would say approach administrators and educators with kindness and practicality, explain the holiday and its significance, prepare short speech and share the toolkit. I will also say that given the COVID restrictions, if the class, if your child's class is still meeting virtually, all of these activities can be done online as well as in person. Utilize HAF as a resource. That's why we're here. We're here to help do student presentations about the Vali as well as other Hinduism content areas. We're happy to do a teacher training and help other teachers teach about Hinduism and the Vali. And all of our materials are free and readily available on our website. We encourage you to spread the word, share these activities with your friends, do the activities at home or with your community. They're not just limited to the classroom and share your experience. If you're able to get this classroom presentation going at your child's school, let us know. If you do the activities at home, let us know. If you're unsuccessful in any way of getting this um, passed in your child's classroom or getting your teacher to, to make the time for this, let us know as well. We just wanna hear how did it go and what can we do to better serve our community. We have all of these educational resources on our website at hinduamerican.org slash teaching resources as well as hinduamerican.org backslash hinduism-101. You can also reach us at the volley at hinduamerican.org with any questions you have and both Tanyelle and I will constantly be checking that email address. We have many different toolkits and educational resources on our website. Here are just a small sample. If you are likely in the month of October, you probably know it's Hindu American Awareness and Appreciation Month. Um, and this is an incentive that we have been working on since 2013. Getting October passed as Hindu American Awareness and Appreciation Month in states such as California and Michigan. This year, we've also expanded our reach to other states as well. Reach out to us if you'd like additional information on how to bring this to your local area. We have our Gandhi toolkit. Gandhi's birthday is in October. So this stands as a big flagstone for us in terms of why we celebrate October as Hindu American Awareness and Appreciation Month. We've got a toolkit there that explains his life lessons as well as the lessons passed on by Martin Luther King Jr. and Cesar Chavez. And we encourage students to use these methods of nonviolence for social change movements. We have our HAF Holy Toolkit, which explains all about Holi, the Festival of Colors, and that, ex that there are activities and lessons in there to also be used in the classroom as well as at home. The big reason why we do this work is we wanna help prevent bullying and bias against Hindu students in American schools and schools all across the world. So we take the time to help educate and advocate, not just for Hinduism, but also for Hindu Americans and Hindu students. Um, and we wanna make sure that teachers feel comfortable sharing and teaching about Hinduism. It's not an easy religion. It doesn't just quite fit into you know, neat little boxes. So there's a lot of nuance and complexity involved. But we have found that by teaching about Hinduism in a positive manner, in a fair and balanced manner, that it has helped with pre the prevention of online bullying, cyberbullying, as well as bullying in face to face contact.
Danielle, why don't you tell us about how to get a city res a city council to pass the Diwali resolution? Thank you, Shireen. Uh, that was excellent. And as you can see, you know, when you're educating people, you're actually kind of engaging in advocacy. And when I'm engaging in advocacy, I'm also educating, at least that's usually the first thing I do is give them the set of facts. Um, and so now we're going to talk to you about how to get your city council or your county commission to pass a Diwali resolution. First and foremost, do, the, do your homework, do the research uh, on your city council, go to the city council's website, look up who is the mayor, who is your city council, who's on the city council, is it called a council, is it called a commission, uh, do you have uh, districts, do you have a representative on the commission that represents your neighborhood and what part of the city are, 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 that you're living in, or do they represent the entire city, so get familiar with the structure, how is the city structured, is it a strong mayor, and so when you understand and have a familiar uh, uh, understanding of who is on your city council, what is the makeup, what's the structure, you know, you're prepared and you know how to speak confidently when you approach your city commission or your mayor about passing a Diwali resolution. The second part is build a team. You don't want to just be yourself, although sometimes you feel like everyone feels like they're a one-man army, um, but build a team and make it diverse. Bring in some students, bring in some professionals, bring in uh, someone uh, who's more mature, bring in young people, bring in entrepreneurs and business owners and doctors, uh, and then play to your strengths. You want to make sure that if you have someone who's a really great speaker, they're very articulate, um, and, and they can get the message across, maybe they make the ask and maybe they make the presentation. If you have someone who's a good writer um, and is really good at, at writing articles, perhaps you task that person with writing an op-ed in their local newspaper saying, we should, you know, Diwali is coming up and this is what it is. And, and we'd like to see the city council pass that resolution. And as always, be presentable, smile, dress pro professionally, make sure that you are presentable and that your team is presentable as well. Steps three and four is advocacy and action. So what you would do uh, once you've built a team, once you get yourself familiar, you've done your homework, submit a meeting request to your city council or to your mayor. Um, and typically that's they, they want to meet with constituents. So you should get a, a positive response when you submit a meeting request. P prepare your team, make sure everyone knows uh, what to say and how to say it, and then plan your meeting and delegate the tasks of, of who says what. Then when you make your meeting, and sometimes you may not need a meeting, sometimes you, you maybe already have a relationship with your mayor or your city council person, um, and you feel confident that you can just ask them for the resolution, uh, and, and that's okay. You can do that. Just submit the request to that commissioner uh, and say, you know, we would like to request that the city council pass it to Bali resolution. If you don't know what to say, we have also provided an email template for you so you can copy and paste how to make that request what are the right words to say how to say it professionally and courteously uh to and and effectively and so we have on our website and i'll give you the link at the end uh, a draft resolution but also a draft email request template to help you make that ask properly uh, and then if you either get the resolution or they want to meet with you in advance to talk about it schedule a date pick a time that's convenient for everyone, and then invite the community. And of course, as always, know the process. So make sure that you make your meeting request, everyone says they pick this date and time, and that everyone shows up on that date and time and makes the request as you planned. Then presentation and follow up. So right now we're, we're living in the COVID age. Um, some city councils are going back to uh, in-person meetings. Some are doing the hybrid model, which seems to be the trend. Uh, they have the, the, the city commission meeting on Zoom or on TV while they meet in person. Uh, but make sure that you, you, know, it's, it, you present it in a way that this, what you're requesting is non-controversial. Um, and here we've put some steps, uh, assuming that you do get the resolution, say thank you. Once you get the resolution, say thank you to the mayor, say thank you to the city council, not just when you go and accept the presentation, but send a follow-up email or send a follow-up phone call and let everyone else in the community know what, what happened and what they did and get other people to make a phone call or send an email. City council, 
council uh, is, is really accessible. Typically, when you go to the website, you'll see uh, the city councilman uh, or council person's uh, email address. And so you should be able to find it relatively easily. And, and, and you can encourage your entire community to send an email to commissioner so-and-so and just say thank you. Uh, then and that's part of your follow up. Uh, and if perhaps if you're going to do a presentation on Diwali when your when your event is coming up um, at your local mandir, or if you have a community uh, event outside, invite the mayor and invite the commissioners to come and be a part of that celebration and read and present the the, the resolution publicly so that they can feel welcome, they can feel inclusive, uh, and that you yourselves as a community are also being inclusive and thinking about bringing elected officials to your events, and then display it, put it in a frame, hang it on the wall, and, and make it part of the permanent record so that in future years, maybe your mayor's term limited in four or five years, the next mayor comes and say, oh, look, there's a resolution from five years ago or 10 years ago, let's do another one. So you want to keep it public, you want to display it, and you want to make sure that everyone sees it now and in the future. And if you don't have any luck, if you're not getting a positive response, as Dr. Bala said, reach out to us. We're happy to help guide you through that process uh, in, in getting a resolution. And you can share your success uh, and or problems that you're having or issues that you're having by writing to us at Diwali at HinduAmerican.org. And what's really cool too, I'll, I'll say, um, you know, I like to share the toolkit when we're making the request for the resolution. That fact sheet at the very beginning of the Diwali toolkit is very useful. Um, and sometimes elected officials and staff, they may not have time to read the entire toolkit. And it's not really, the whole toolkit's not really for them, but that fact sheet is. So you can print out that fact sheet and attach it uh, with the resolution when you submit it via email to your city council member or to your mayor. Um, and you can send them the whole toolkit, but say, I wanna draw your attention to the beginning fact sheets and so that they feel confident that they know what it is that they're passing. Uh, and it's a great resource for them as well. So um, I'll stop right there, but that's essentially how you can uh, educate your elected officials and request a Diwali resolution in your city council. Shireen? Yeah, no, thank you so much. And, you know, coming back to a point you made is that you're right. While the toolkit is designed for, you know, for children and teachers and parents, there are aspects of it that can be pulled out. So if you do reach out to us at the volley at HinduAmerican.org, you say, hey, I'd like to just get a printout of the um, fact sheet or in there we have a the volley calendar. Can you send that to me as a separate PDF? We're happy to do so. We're happy to answer any questions you have, and we're here to hear. We're here to hear any of the challenges or struggles you have in getting a resolution or getting a toolkit passed in your school or local area, as well as we want to hear about the successes because we all succeed together. Exactly, and so we like to share that on our social media. Follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram at Hindu American. Go to our website, hinduamerican.org, and feel free to email Shireen or myself. It's our first names at hinduamerican.org. Our advocacy is social, so you can amplify your voice. And when you tag us, we'll like and retweet it and share it as well. And so we want to make sure that you are all included in our advocacy and that um, you include us in your advocacy successes as well. So anything else, Shireen, you'd like to add? No, I guess I just want to wish everyone a very happy Diwali. Me as well. Namaste. Thank you, everyone, for your attention. And I hope you enjoyed our Dharma Advocates from Classrooms to City Hall Diwali Special Training Program. Thank you.